While I don't consider myself to be a huge fan of the Planet of the Apes franchise, I have seen all of the films at least twice, and I certainly like the idea of the Planet of the Apes story. When I went into the Rise of the Planet of the Apes movie in 2011, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was pretty certain that it would be yet another reboot of the Apes franchise, and from what I could see in the trailers, it looked like the film would follow the revolution of the Apes, much like the film Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. As it turns out, I was right in that this film is a reboot and not a prequel. It utilizes certain elements of the mythology of the first five films, like the ape who said no and the astronauts going into space, but it uses these elements in ways that are streamlined and different from how they were presented in the original films. However, I was mistaken in that this film really isn't remaking the story of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Even when promotional material for this movie said things like, evolution becomes revolution, this movie isn't so much about supplanting a suppressive culture that is in charge of the planet and replacing it with a better one. This movie is really more about the protagonist, the ape Caesar, finding out what his place in the world is and finding out the hard way how the world works. He does start a riot near the end of the movie, but the call in the air isn't kill all the humans, but this is all really just a way for Caesar to bring happiness to him and his brethren. The revolution nonsense on the poster for the film becomes even more bizarre when you consider that Caesar only kills one person in this movie. Every other time he sees one of his fellow apes about to kill someone, he stops them. This definitely leaves possibilities open for the sequel, where I imagine that we will see the progression of the elitism of the apes and the degradation of the remnants of human culture, but that isn't really what we get here. One thing I was disappointed about with this film is the portrayal of the human characters. Almost every human being in this movie is either a scumbag with no morals or is just useless in general. This is largely so that the plot can happen in the way that it needs to happen. David Oyelowo's character is greedy and he reminds the audience and characters of this in every scene that he is in. If he isn't only interested in becoming a bazillionaire, then James Franco doesn't feel forced to take baby Caesar home from the lab. If James Franco's bully of a next-door neighbor doesn't act like such a subhuman scumbag, then Caesar doesn't get carted off to the indoor zoo. If Tom Felton isn't a sociopath who you actually stand up and cheer for when he dies, then you have nothing that really motivates Caesar to start his air quotes revolt. These characters are overly cartoonish, and I honestly would have rather had humans in this movie that are three-dimensional who are doing things that Caesar doesn't understand, and then Caesar revolts because he doesn't understand them. This would have made for a much more complex movie than what we actually got. And even the characters who aren't totally evil are just not that interesting anyway. James Franco's lady friend is one of the most boring things in this movie. I don't really think she served any purpose at all. Anything she does do could have been given to another character to do. James Franco, there are many times in this movie when I really feel like he is killing it with his acting, like when his father dies or when Caesar refuses to come home with him from the indoor zoo. But outside of those two all too brief scenes, I just don't feel like he has much to do other than be pretty unconvincing at delivering techno babble. The one character who I feel like I can call an all-around good human being is John Lithgow's character, but like Franco, the story doesn't give him anything to do. He is a vehicle for Caesar to be taken to the indoor zoo, and after that, the plot sweeps him under the rug with the return of his Alzheimer's disease. The story itself, I feel like, is paced just a little too slow at the beginning of the movie. Everything before Caesar is taken away from James Franco is more or less necessary, but I definitely feel like we could have gotten there a lot quicker. And then I don't feel like enough time is spent on the events after Caesar has decided that he's had enough. After the big battle of the bridge, James Franco goes to his special forest that he spent time with Caesar in to go talk to Caesar and see if he can bring him home. He admits that, air quotes, all of this is his fault. And that includes everyone who has died at the hands of this ape riot, which I have to assume is probably in the dozens, and Franco doesn't know it yet, but him pushing for the continued research into the cure for Alzheimer's is also the root cause of what will eventually be the extinction of humanity, as we see in the mid-credits scene. So as far as blunders go, this is a pretty huge one. 
But regardless of what Franco says, it doesn't really seem like he has grasped the concept of there being consequences to him being an idiot. Just because he feels remorse doesn't make all of this go away. And unlike the progressive hostilities between the apes and the humans, which I believe will be explored further in the sequel, I don't see this lack of character growth going anywhere in the sequel, as I don't really think James Franco will even be in the sequel, nor am I certain that the sequel will be set shortly after this film. For all we know, the next film will be set a generation later, or several generations later. And the problems don't stop there. Even though Caesar tries to keep the fatalities to a minimum, he still kills a man, and he orders the death of another. And again, Franco's character accepts the blame for all of this. But where's the confrontation? This entire movie saw Caesar not fully grasping just how the human world works, and I guess it's a moot point by the end of the film because soon he won't have to worry about humans at all. But I was really hoping that we could have had some kind of butting of heads between Caesar and Franco's character. Unfortunately, after all the bloodshed that Franco and Caesar both cause, it all goes away with a hug and a smile. So yeah, I guess that's how things are done these days. It certainly sounds like I didn't like this movie, and my enjoyment of it was less than the first time I watched it for sure, but I don't think this is a bad film. I imagine so much of what I loved about this film when it first came out was that it was better than most of the previous ape films, but it is not a perfect film. I definitely feel like there was much room for improvement. But if you've never seen this film, or if you've never seen any of the apes films, I'd recommend watching this, bearing in mind that it does have flaws. Having said that, I'm going to go start a riot in the cages. I'll see you next time.